Fat a Cake, the channel that's about baking and much, much more. A warm welcome to my channel. Today, we are making delicious crunchy kalkans, a classic Goan bite-sized pastry that is a traditional fixture on Christmas sweet platters in Goan homes. My recipe makes light and crunchy kalkans that puff up and expand in the oil as they get fried. Now without wasting any more time, let me show you how to make kalkans my way right now at Pat a Cake. Let's start by taking a look at the main ingredients. To make kalkals, we'll need one and a half cups, that's around 190 grams of maida or all-purpose flour that I've already sifted, a quarter cup or 50 grams of sugar, I measured it first and then ground it to a fine powder, and one and a half tablespoons of pure ghee that I've melted. In place of this, you could use vanaspati, that's vegetable fat, or butter. But if you're using salted butter, you'll have to add just half the quantity of salt in this recipe. And here I have a quarter cup of milk. Let's see how much we'll actually need. We'll also need half an egg yolk. Yes, you heard right. We'll need just half of this. That's because for the purpose of this demonstration video, I've halved my usual recipe where I use three cups of maida and one egg yolk. Anyway, I'm including a bonus tutorial on how to halve an egg yolk in this video. Who knows, it might come in handy for you in some other recipe. I'll first transfer the maida to a mixing bowl. Into this, I'll mix in a quarter teaspoon of salt. Next, let's add the melted ghee. It's hot, but not sizzling hot. Let's rub it well into the flour. Now the quantity of ghee or butter is critical where this recipe is concerned. If you add too much of it, the kalkals will be crunchy, but they'll puff up and unravel too much and lose their shape. Add too little and the kalkals will remain tightly curled without expanding and become dense. But the right amount will make them puff up without losing their shape completely and make them light and crunchy. I'll now add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and the powdered sugar and mix everything. Now let's have that egg yolk. It's simple really. The volume of an egg yolk is roughly one tablespoon. That's three teaspoons. So I'll lightly whisk the egg yolk and add just one and a half teaspoons of it to the flour mix. That done, I'll add the milk. A little at a time, adding only as much as I need to make a pliable dough that's not too hard or too soft. I didn't need to use all of the milk. You might need a little more or a little less milk than I've used today. Go by the consistency of the dough. It has to be almost like chapati dough, I would say. Let's cover the dough and let it rest for around 15 minutes. In the meanwhile, let me tell you how we'll be shaping the kalkans. Traditionally, as most of you may know, we use combs that are reserved specially for making kalkans. Washing and putting them away after using them till it's time to make kalkans again for the next Christmas. We also use forks to create the characteristic ridges on the kalkans. Nowadays, plastic paddles with grooves like this are also used. Now the kalkal recipe is one of those many hands make light work kind of recipes. In the old days, even neighbors would pitch in to help one another out when they made kalkals. Now just in case you don't have enough combs to hand around, you could ask someone to use this kind of a deep frying spoon. Its wire design makes it perfect for shaping the kalkans. You'll soon see how. After resting the dough, let's knead it for a few seconds. 
and then divide it into four parts. I'll start with one part and keep the other three parts covered so they don't dry out whilst I'm shaping the kalkals. In the good old days, we first made tiny balls of dough, a job that was usually given to the kids in the family. Each ball would then be pressed and spread out on a comb, on the side with the broader teeth, or on a fork. I've lightly greased this comb. You have to press the dough down and spread it out using your thumbs. Spread it out a little more on the upper end of the comb to get an extra half turn while rolling each kalkal. After the first half turn, press this edge down a little and then continue rolling the dough. When you get to the other end, seal that edge by using the tips of the teeth of the comb or by pinching the dough, like this. Sealing the edge helps prevent the kalkals from uncurling too much when they puff up in the hot oil. Let's make a kalkal similarly using the fork. I've greased a part of this wire spoon already, so let's make a kalkal using this too. Remember to cover the shaped kalkals with a napkin to see that they don't dry out. I'll now start making the kalkals in a different, smarter way. Let's draw this dough ball into a long rope around half an inch thick, the way they do in Italian gnocchi recipes after which they cut the potato dough rope into segments, using each segment to shape a gnocchi. We too will cut this dough rope into segments at intervals of around half an inch and do away with the tedious process of first shaping small dough balls. This method cuts short the kalkal making process considerably. I'll keep the dough segments covered in this small bowl while I shape the kalkals. Each segment can be directly pressed on the kalkal making mold without first shaping it into a ball. Apply light pressure while spreading it out or else bits of the dough could get stuck between the teeth of the comb. I'll now continue making the rest of the kalkals. I made some kalkals with the comb and a few using the fork. Now let's take these to my gas stove and deep fry them. The kalkals have to be deep fried on medium low heat, so I've kept the flame on medium low. Let's check if the oil is hot enough. When a tiny dough ball dropped into the oil rises to the surface in a few seconds, you'll know the oil has reached the right temperature. Let's transfer the first batch of kalkals to the oil. The oil will start frothing, but there's nothing you can do about this. Anyway. For the first minute or so, don't disturb the kalkals. Let them firm up a little in the oil and then start swirling them around and turning them over gently so they can get fried evenly on all sides. Like I told you, the kalkals puff up in the hot oil. The kalkals have to be deep fried gradually for around 5 to 7 minutes till they turn golden brown in colour. If the oil is too hot, they will brown quickly on the outside but remain uncooked inside. Another important point to remember is that the kalkals will continue to get fried even after you take them out of the oil because of the residual heat inside them and consequently become a deeper shade of brown than when they were taken out of the oil. So don't fry the kalkals till they are dark brown in colour. It's been 6 minutes and this batch is done. So I'll now remove the kalkals to this bowl, which I've lined with an absorbent kitchen paper towel. Let's fry the rest of the kalkals. If you find the kalkals are browning too fast, turn the heat to low for a minute or so and then increase it again. Here are all the kalkals I just fried. You can see they are a shade or two darker than when we took them out of the oil. See how the kalkals have puffed up. That's a sure sign they'll be light and crunchy and not dense. I'll now let the kalkals cool completely and then store them in an airtight container. 
these delicious Christmas kalkals will stay good at room temperature for over a month, if they last that long, that is. Time for me to show you the texture of our kalkals. Let me break one. And to give you a better idea of the texture, I'll eat one. That's how light and crunchy they are. So do give my recipe a shot. By the way, the same recipe can be used to make kormolas too. But next week, I'll have another kormola recipe for you that's eggless. So stay tuned. A final request to support my channel by subscribing and sharing. And till I meet you again with my next Christmas video, happy cooking!